Today is going to be a little bit of a different video where I'm going to help one of my good friends review a new monitor from Samsung. And this is their uh, 1440p 240Hz panel because I'm very curious about this monitor because not only is it a new for the industry, but it's also a new for people who have high-end hardware and are they going to be able to run this? And I'm also going to be testing it out, playing on it, but also testing for things like input lag, which is a huge one in the gaming community, and also response times, which I'm using the camera that I'm filming on now to do this sort of intro for you guys. We're going to be using that to shoot and see how good these response times are as well. While I'm at it, I'm also going to check out the colors on this monitor and then test it against two other monitors that have been sent over here. This is a 144Hz 1080p panel from AOC, and then there's a 4K 60Hz panel from BenQ. And we'll go over all the differences here and just give it to you guys straight. Is it worth it to get Samsung's new monitor, or should you just be saving your money? Well, in this case, probably a lot of it. There is only one way to find out, and that is to jump in the Tech Yes Mobile with our little fun contraption here. Isn't it cool, like I'm wearing a, a Intel hoodie and I got a little Ryzen box here. It shows that we can just all get along in the world of PC. Oh yeah, let's get those results for you guys. We just landed at the Rocket Jump Ninja studio here where we've got the Odyssey G7 32 inch on display. Now this, I played a game on this already and it's actually really smooth. Uh, the curvature is one thing, you either like it or you don't, or you're like me, you're somewhere in between, you don't really care. This is the 24G2, however, 144 hertz, IPS. We're going to put this to the test very soon, and we've also got this BenQ 4K 60 hertz monitor. Now, it's important to illustrate that you're either a gamer or you're not a gamer. And that's what this one is right here. This is the 10-bit panel supporting DCI P3 standard. And uh, the good thing is that all three panels in today's video, they're all FreeSync or G-Sync. In the case of the Odyssey, that is G-Sync enabled. So uh, let's check out the juicy numbers first, where apparently the Odyssey has a one millisecond response time and very low input lag. And for a VA panel, that's actually pretty impressive if that turns out to be true, where you're getting better colors than TN, but having those extremely low response times, which you do need at 240 Hertz. Anyhow, let's roll it, let's get into it. And here we are now the next day back at the studio. I did a lot more testing than I thought I would be doing on these monitors. I guess once I get started, I wanna go through everything tip to toe and then give you guys just my honest thoughts and opinions. And straight away, one thing I noticed across all three of these monitors in today's video is that the black equalizers on all of them are just essentially gamma boosters. They don't really do much. I have seen this setting done right on different monitors but the three monitors here today don't do black equalization good at all, which I think is a new feature. It's coming in and it can work really well if it's boosting those darker areas, especially if you're a competitive player. Though one thing about the G7, this is the Odyssey, comes in two flavors, 27 inch and 32 inch. Now the 27 inch will actually come in cheaper than the 32 inch, but it'll have a better pixel density. So depending on how far you're sitting back, you may wish to go for the cheaper 27 inch versus the 32 inch. But there was some anomalies I found with this monitor. First of all, the one millisecond response times written on the box, they aren't really one millisecond when it comes to real world gaming experience. Uh, in Counter-Strike, this is the test that I usually do for just real world response times. What we saw here was on the fastest response time overdrive setting, we were getting around three milliseconds response times, uh, which is very good for a VA panel especially. This is the fastest times I've seen for a VA panel, coming very close to that of TN panels that I've tested here. But for instance, on my Aorus uh, KD25F, when I put that on the max overdrive setting, which I'm comfortable with, it's about one to one and a half milliseconds response times. Very quick in terms of how it responds in games. Though another thing is too, the colors on this don't look as good as an IPS, and they look very very similar. If you're sitting on this front on, which you're gonna be gaming on, 
The one thing the VA panel does do better than the TN panels is it does have better viewing angles. Though that aside, continuing on with the G7, it is G-Sync supported, though having this technology switched on, I noticed a very strange problem occur, and I haven't seen this in the history of testing monitors ever, and that was parts of the screen were reacting and other parts of the screen just weren't working at all. And this was happening in CSGO. And so with that, I'd recommend leaving the G-Sync turned off on both the software side and the NVIDIA control panel and on the monitor itself. So for the response times, they're very impressive for a VA panel, especially at 240 Hz, you need fast response times, otherwise you're gonna get kind of like a blurrier image, which is gonna be bad for your eyes. The three milliseconds on the fastest setting is where I'd leave it at with the gaming numbers. I didn't notice any bad uh, artifacting or overshooting on this setting. However, the input lag, there is a little bit on this monitor. I'd say it's roughly around five milliseconds. Even though it's really not going to make much of a difference, I feel like in 2020, when all the competitors are getting theirs between zero to two milliseconds, I feel like Samsung could just edge it down ever so more when I know they're capable of doing it. The on the note of input lag, turning on the G-Sync on this monitor did add roughly on average around three milliseconds input lag. So there's the G7 out of the way, the magical land of 240 FPS, 1440p gaming. Was I super impressed by it? And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's nice, I'm not gonna lie, but I am waiting for OLED to hit gaming monitors. OLED has the perfect lighting, or more near perfect lighting, that your eyes need. It's got a mix of better greens and reds versus blue in the backlighting, and it's also got some of the fastest response times to that of near being instant. So that technology, I am just really hanging out for it to hit mainstream 24 inch, 27 inch, or even 32 inch gaming monitors, but who knows when that's actually gonna come. Though one more note of the color profiles out of the box for the G7, they did do a pretty good job of making this thing relatively color accurate. I mean, it's not perfectly accurate. If you're a professional video editor, you definitely wouldn't want to use this monitor as your main uh, video editing monitor unless you calibrated it. But if you were getting into video editing and mainly gaming, this monitor will do the job. So next up now, we have the AOC 24G2. Now, this is an IPS panel, 144 Hz, 1080p, and you've got the best thing is the price, which is 300 Aussie dollars roughly, or in the US you can get these things for around 150 USD. Now, one thing I'm gonna say straight away, for this price point, the stand is actually very impressive. Four-way adjustable, height, tilt, swivel, and uh, horizontal and vertical. So that in itself is, is a feat when you're giving out an IPS panel that does perform pretty well. I mean, we're looking at around roughly a six to seven millisecond response time uh, you'd want to leave this on the fastest overdrive setting. And then you've got input lag, which is extremely low. I'm measuring around 15.9 on average milliseconds, which is coming very close to that of the best monitor that I've run through here. And that is the KD25F from Aorus. So that was getting the lowest frame I've seen of seven milliseconds. This scored eight milliseconds. So if anything, you're looking at roughly a zero to two millisecond input lag on this AOC monitor. Very impressive. Then you've got the IPS colors then you've got the viewing angles if you need it. And again, not really gonna make a difference though if you're sitting in front of a monitor playing games. However, the next part about this panel is that when I, it's got a setting called motion blur reduction just like the G7, but this is doing it a different way. It's got red frame insertion where it's got about five milliseconds off and then it's got about 2.5 milliseconds on. So the brightness will be reduced greatly as opposed to the G7, which will take a hit of around 33% brightness where that's got three milliseconds on to 1.5 milliseconds off. So in my opinion, this is one of the perfect gaming monitors to get if you like value for money, and if you're a bit more enthusiastic than 60 Hertz in the magical land of PC gaming. And to be honest, 1080p, 24 inch, it's where a lot of professional gamers still play their games at. Having too big of a screen is not always a good thing, especially if you're too close to it where your peripheral vision can't see all the details going on at the screen at the same time. Which leads us to the last monitor here. This is the BenQ EW3200U. Now this monitor is very pricey. It's coming in actually more expensive than the G7. It's a 32 inch IPS, but this monitor here, I'm gonna highlight in the world of PC where there's different strokes for different folks. It's got a 10 bit panel. So if you're editing videos in 10 bit, you're gonna see that come out on this monitor where you're gonna get much more accuracy to then downsample that to 8-bit later to give the viewers the best image possible in the videos. 
Though besides that, this IPS panel, I gotta say there's something about it. Out of the box, the colors look absolutely gorgeous and they're actually very close to being color braided by the X-Rite system. So there wasn't much of a difference at all. Very little difference as opposed to the AOC, which was a little bit off, same with the G7, but you could still get your work done on those other two monitors. But this is where the BenQ monitor comes into play, where you need those uh, accurate color profiles, whether you're on MacBook or whether you're doing a REC709 profile, you've got those saved into this monitor from the get-go. Another thing is too, all three monitors in today's video do have relatively good brightness. It's not the best I've seen, but it's certainly far from the worst. Though for me personally, these brightness levels are more than enough, especially if you're spending every day in front of this panel and you gotta work with it. However, HDR modes on these monitors, and really it's more just a color profile on these pictures, where if you want that more saturated, contrasty look, you're going to get it on this panel in particular, where I actually prefer it with the colors out of the box. I think it looks gorgeous for a 4K panel. And in fact, even if you wanna do a bit of gaming besides your work, this is gonna double down, especially if you're playing RPGs, or for me, I've been playing a bit of Warcraft 3 lately, it really just pops and gives you a really enjoyable experience. Now, another thing going on too is this speaker system. I've gotta give kudos to BenQ on their higher end monitors. They've included a really good speaker system into the monitors nowadays that I would honestly have no problems using besides my headphones and getting a really enjoyable experience. So kudos to the audio, kudos to the colors and the IPS panel, as well as the low input lag, which was actually pretty good. Coming in close to that of the other two panels, though the response times do leave a little bit to be desired here, ranging in at around 13 milliseconds on average, which is fine for a 60 hertz panel, but it's not gonna be that great for fast motion games, especially games like Call of Duty, Warzone and stuff like that, where you need the faster response times because everything's moving so quickly. Anyhow, capping over these three monitors here for you guys, the three panels all feature either FreeSync or G-Sync. And to be fair, in the case of 60 Hertz, that's gonna be a pretty desirable feature to have, which I don't see many 4K monitors offering this feature, especially IPS panels. So it's good to see that BenQ's included that even on a monitor with a 10-bit panel. Another thing is too, uh, some of these monitors aren't value for money plays. I'd say the AOC 24G2 gives exceptional value for money. It's actually, I was very impressed with the value for money that things bring into the table. Though the G7 is more of a acquired taste. Because it's 240 hertz, 1440p, you're not only gonna need a big budget to spend on this monitor, you're also gonna have to make sure your 2080 Ti or your upcoming RTX 3000 or the new RDNA 2 graphics card is gonna be able to handle this kind of resolution and frame rates. As well as on top of that is you've now got your CPU, which also has to push 240 hertz too. So in the grand scheme of things, you're gonna be spending a lot more money on not just your monitor, but your hardware. I'd say in general, expect to spend around three times more setting up a PC to get the frame rates you want versus the 1080p 144 hertz option. And I'm gonna say one thing, you're probably not gonna get three times more of an enjoyable experience. Though of course the last monitor, the BenQ, that's really not a value for money play at all. It's got a specialized 4K IPS panel, which is targeting a specialized market. And that's about it really. I just hope we can get OLED to gaming monitors very soon. Cause you can probably see my face, I'm not blown away as opposed to three or four years ago when all these monitors were coming out with high refresh rates, I was blown away. I wanna see technology progress. With that aside, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of all three monitors in today's video. Love reading your thoughts and opinions. As always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Andre P. And they ask, what are you spraying that you wear a mask for? And what I'm spraying usually a lot of the times I'm using multi-purpose spray. This stuff is, as the title says, multi-purpose. You can use it for pretty much anything. It is my go-to spray, even over that of brake cleaner. But of course, when you're spraying all these chemicals, you don't want them going in your lungs. And even the, you guys in the past have expressed concern over my poor little lungs here, and I gotta start taking care of them. So hence the mask, and hence the uh, long live Tech Yes City slogan. Anyhow guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button for us. And I guess the ultimate question is, will I be buying a Samsung G7? Probably not. After just testing it out again, I'm gonna be waiting for an OLED panel to really blow me away. 
Uh, in terms of the G7, I love what they've done. They've made the G they've made the V8 panel as best as it can be, but it still feels like there's some uh, glitches that concern me. I feel like maybe this panel was rushed to the market, especially in those earlier tests when I was playing CSGO and I saw that weird glitching error. So I don't like it. One thing I really don't like around Tech Air City is when companies use the public as beta testers. They've got all the time in the world, all the budget in the world to make those products hit 100%. So why release it at 95% when they can release it 100%? I just think it would go a lot further. Anyhow, hope that opinion helps you guys and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you wanna see the content as soon as it drops, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now, bye.